Hello everybody, Jose Rodriguez. It is Friday the 8th of June, Friday night chit chat time. I want to give you guys a little heads up. This month I thought I was going to do five live streams because we have five Saturdays which fit perfectly in this month's calendar. Unfortunately, it'll be over the weekend and of course I'll be there when it is Saturday evening. There will be no live stream, but I will catch up with you guys when I come back. But anyway, that is a bit ahead. Let's go ahead and talk about a couple of topics. I'm not gonna do a multi-topic chit chat tonight. In fact, really I should do individual videos about this, but I have so many other subjects to touch on that I'm just gonna go ahead and include those as well as I can tonight. All right, so I received another update or a so-called newsletter from Inkjet Mall. They are very worried about the Epson updated firmwares that they are forcing on people. And by forcing, I mean this. Listen to this one. And then I'm gonna tell you how to avoid this. Do not update your P400 firmware, and that applies to the P600, P800 as well. Say you just installed these printers. Unfortunately, they may already come with that firmware pre-installed, okay? It depends how new the printer is, but if you have one that is at least six months old, it will possibly not include that new updated firmware that they are including. And I'll tell you how they are doing this. So this one is particularly tricky if you look at the firmware upgrade as something totally unwanted. A customer informed us as they were doing a nozzle check on their Epson Surecolor P400 that a message popped up saying they would need to accept an update in order to complete the nozzle check process. Lucky they contacted us and we were able to instruct them to uninstall the Epson updater in their operating system. We then instructed them to download the Epson driver and utilities package as separate components rather than the combo download. I'll touch on that in a little bit. When you download the Epson printer driver, there are several possible packages. The one to avoid is the combination one, which includes an updater that will try to push you updates. You don't want that package. Instead, download just the driver you need and the utilities package separately. By utility packages, they mean extra pieces of software and not a auto updater of either the driver or the firmware. So when you go to the Epson site, you will have a choice. You will have the combo pack, which includes everything and automatically installs the updater, whether you want to or not. And that could, by its own lonesome self, update your printer for you while you're sleeping, for instance. Next thing you know, if you were running any kind of third-party ink sets or refillable cartridges, which the P400, not so with the P800, we'll touch on that after we get done here. You wake up and all of a sudden your cartridges or your chips will not be recognized no longer because of the updated firmware. So to avoid doing that, the best practice is to simply download the individual driver. The driver will not affect your ability to use third-party products, okay? It will not affect that. Only the firmware will. And if you update the firmware, they are introducing these new updated firmwares. And of course, they include blocks for the particular ID color numbers that are included in these refillable cartridges. Just like I have explained for the P800, every single, and I mean probably hundreds of thousands of these refillable cart sets, they come with clones of the same chips for each color. So all of these clones contain the single ID color code for say yellow or magenta or cyan, to make it simple. So all of these hundreds of thousands of chips for magenta have the same ID number. Of course, these cards are gonna go into individual printers. They're not gonna be swapped. So they go into individual printers and the printers will accept them because the printer has never seen these particular ID code numbers. 
so it will accept them, but only once. After that, you're stuck. The chips will not reset because chip resetting simply means that you're going to update the ink level from empty to full. Well, it doesn't care. It's still the same ID number. So the same thing is going to happen to the P600 and now apparently the P400. So keep that in mind. Only download the individual driver and never, never, never update your firmware or you're going to be stuck, especially those two printers that have not come down out of the box already blocked. Okay, so keep that in mind. Let's just do one more subject. And by the way, did you notice that I have been printing my purge sheet okay half a sheet and that is plenty guys if you guys own um, q image one or q image ultimate you can then set it to print these half sheets it'll use half the ink and you don't have to worry about the printer clogging up on you while you are away so for a printer like this every couple of days i do it for a printer like the Pro 1, Pro 10, Pro 100, also every couple of days. For the P800, you can set it for once a week. It doesn't have to be that often. Most of the other Epson printers, like 3880, the earlier R3000, again, once a week is more than plenty. So you can go away for, say, six weeks, come back, and you will end up with six of these prints sitting on your tray. When you run your nozzle check, chances are, this is not a full guarantee, folks, but chances are that your nozzle check will be perfect, okay? So keep that in mind. Again, occasionally they will have sales on QMH1, which is the watered down version of QMH Ultimate available for Mac for the first time ever and Windows. It is strictly a printing program. It will not have all of the myriad other functionalities that QMH Ultimate has. All right, so let's talk a little bit about what I touched upon on an earlier video where I talked about the differences between printers and why they do not output exactly the same. And I, you know, I, I, I said, what would be the point of every single printer, regardless of the ink set, being able to output the same identical level of color reproduction? Then why should I spend $2,000 for a printer? I would get me one that only cost me about $100 maybe four colors, cheaper to operate, right? And it would put out the same output. Well, that's not the case, obviously. Printers have different outputs. They have different characteristics. Printers that have a full fledge of colors in their ink sets, say 12 colors, including orange, green, blue, red, it depends on your model, of course. But these printers will be able to tailor a certain part of the color gamut on your prints. For, so for instance, a printer like this one, which has a dedicated blue and red, see, you don't need yellow and magenta to create red. You have a dedicated red. You don't need cyan and magenta to create a blue, which by the way is toward purple, not what you think blue is. That's cyan. So you have a dedicated blue. So when you're doing, say, a very intense seascape, with really intense purple, blues, and, and dark, just really intense colors, this printer will reproduce that region better than, say, a P800 would, okay? The P800 does a really great job at reproducing the red-orange realm, okay? Red-orange magenta realm. It does a majestic job. Printers that have green, dedicated green inks, don't have to mix cyan and yellow to create green. As soon as you start getting into that transitional point where yellow starts becoming green, the green ink starts to kick in. So you don't need so much the adjacent cyan and flanking yellow ink to help produce green. Green will kick in, red will kick in, and especially the red, the Pro 1000, the Pro 1, that red ink is unique. That is why we cannot use a third-party red ink according to precision colors. We have to rely on the OEM ink. In this particular case, we have to rely on OEM blue and OEM yellow to be able to get as good and as close to OEM rendition when we refill these cartridges right here. 
I already put one in. This is taking forever. So anyway, so it would be great if you could just refill these with nothing but OEM. But that will cost you about $225 a pop for a 700 ml cartridge meant for the larger version of this printer, which is the 2000, the 4000, or the 6000. So that's a lot of ink you have to buy in order to have sufficient ink available. That's 80 ml per fill. But that's really the best way to go. So otherwise, you have to rely on a hybrid set. So that's going to be, again, the output is not going to match what the output of a Pro 1 is because the Pro 1 doesn't have blue. The Pro 1 has an extra gray ink. This one only has two gray inks. So 12 channels, you have to give up something when you introduced blue. So they actually took, instead of having three shades of gray, they actually adjusted the density of the two shades and the print engine takes matters into its own hands and is able to reproduce just as good a graduated shade of gray just using the two grays rather than the three grays that the Pro 1 has. Pro 10 doesn't have three grays either. And the Pro 10 produces beautiful graduated gray tones as well. So different printers, different quality and different look, different look of the final product. And that is what you choose when you buy a printer. It's just like going back to the old film days. And for those of you who never shot film, you can experiment with this. There are some programs, some plugins that you can buy for Photoshop and for Premiere to apply looks to your video or your images, depending on the original, say, color film that you may have used. Many, 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 many different films. You apply them, they all have different looks, okay? So the same thing happens with a printer. This printer will enhance your blues and purples, make them look better than any other particular printer can produce. A printer with green and orange will, of course, be able to produce that realm in the gamut better than a printer without green and orange, okay? The same thing happens with the R2000, the P400. It has yellow and orange and red ink. It doesn't have light cyan, okay? It doesn't have grays. It just has black for photo black and matte black. So the print engine in that particular printer can take care of that. It, it can take care of that. Even though it is lacking light cyan, it doesn't really need it. The color rendition with that particular family of printers, the R2000, also the R1900, 1900, 2000, and the P400, is very intense, more than you would expect from a pigment printer type color, very punchy. And of course, the gloss optimizer enhances that even more. So that particular type of printer produces a certain output that you either like or not like. And so if you like it, you would choose that particular family of printers. If you do not like it, you would choose a P800 or a 3880. Okay. And that's the way it is. Each printer, if they were all the same, like I said earlier, then who cares, right? You would pick the cheapest printer. They will all output identical outputs. It wouldn't matter if they cost $3,000 or $100. But the differences between printers is in its nuances of their outputs and what fits your needs the best. Of course, you're going to then marry that output quality of this printer or that one or that one or that one. I got 13 of them here. To a particular type or types of papers that you will gravitate toward because you love the effect that they produce when they are combined. Of course, then it gets really hairy because everybody wants to do refilling, right? They want to use third-party inks because they don't want to pay the money for the best output. And that, of course, requires OEM. But if you choose to stick with original inks, then what you need to do is at least go somewhere where they're going to have sufficient number of printers on hand in the premises and possibly some samples. The best places to go, of course, are these electronic shows where they will have companies like Epson, Canon, HP there uh, showing off their products. Of course, they're going to show you the best possible results. 
And so at least that is one way to find out what a particular model can produce and what a particular model can exceed at and which one beats which one in whatever look you're after. And it's all about you, okay? You're the one that's gonna judge what I want a printer to produce. That is it. All right, let's call it a night, folks. Air conditioning is kicking on right now as I speak. So let's call it a night. We'll see you all tomorrow evening, six o'clock. As always, I hope that Mike Cheney will be able to join us because I have a few questions for him and as well as you guys may have some questions for him. So please come there with questions already in your mind pertaining to QImage Ultimate or QImage One for Mac and or Windows. So that is it. Thank you so much. Don't forget to subscribe, share, and like. As always, happy printing, everybody, and bye-bye.